What's up, guys? Welcome back to the show. Today, I want to talk about how the military has changed. I get asked all the time, Nick, would you join the military in today's climate? And, I, and to be honest, I'm not so sure because I'm I'm coming from a place of a 41 year old veteran, um, and I look at the world today and I see it very differently than I see it. I saw it when I was um, 18, 19 years old, or 17 years old, and it's a very different world. So I can't say that I would, to be 100% honest. I can't say that I would. But like I say to every guy, every freaking 100 you know, teenagers a day that message me in this thing, would you join the military, Nick? Again, uh, I would do it all over again. Yes, every single bit of it. Uh, no regrets. Um, I've, that, I've got that tattooed somewhere on me. Um, <laughs> not really. I have other dumb tattoos, not the no regrets one. But I don't have any regrets when it comes to the to joining the military. Uh, it made me the man I am today. And uh, so I tell young men the same thing. I said, hey, what is your goal? What is your vision for yourself? And uh, and it could be, you know, there's, there's a lot of good things about serving your country. Um, and there's a lot of good things about joining the military for your own reasons, for yourself as well. And I want to talk about kind of the four changes that happen that I feel happen when someone joins the military or they push themselves in the military, not just join the military and just kind of be a slime bag for four years and then get out, um, but actually join and, and get everything out of it that you can so that when you go to the next chapter in life, you really thrive, right? So, and that's kind of what I took it as, right? And, and you know, my initial thought when I joined the military was I was going to do four and be four and done, and then four turned into eight, and eight turned into 12, and then I was definitely done. Uh, but uh, there for a while, honestly, I was like, well, I'll do 20. You know, after, after, I think it was about after eight, I was like, well, I'll do, you know, I'm going to do 20. Um, but, you know, obviously from me being in from 2000 to 2012, it took a toll. I wrote a book about it. Ding, ding. Excommunicated warrior popped up somewhere, right, Mario? Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> so I want to talk about the four things that I think help people. And, uh, I see these, I see these, uh, comments all the time. Like, Oh, somebody talked to me like that. I, that's what they tell me. You go to, I'll send you the dentist. Yeah. I'm going to punch you in the face and punch you in the face. Okay, bud. Um, you know, if a instructor yelled at me like that, I'd knock his teeth out. How, it's weird how that's never happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, and, and this, the sad part of that is this, if a man can't handle being yelled at by a man without losing his emotions or losing his 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 ability to control himself i mean that's a fault on you like if someone yells at me i don't lose all demeanor and just completely fall apart and then just start swinging on people because i'm not in control of my body right or my mind maybe swinging on somebody isn't the best interest isn't what's the best interest of for you so my first thing being the improved ability to handle confrontation in the military, you are constantly dealing with confrontation. From the time you step onto the, you know, and I can talk about the Marine Corps, but from the time you step on the yellow footprints until the day you leave, you are getting chastised by somebody. Even as a senior staff and CEO, there's some officer, sergeant major, sorry, one sergeant, some dumbass first sergeant yelling at you about your haircut or your uniform or, you know, and I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm not, wasn't the, at the end, I wasn't the best, like what they call like a garrison marine, if you will. Like I didn't really give a shit. You know, you've seen enough combat, you just kind of like hey, stuff is not as important, you know. And uh, some people, that's what they live by. There's some people in the military that their whole world is just haircuts and blouse boots. Poor guys. Um, but nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless, you're gonna handle. You're gonna deal with a lot of confrontation, and you have as you grow in the military, as you go through it you're able to learn how to deal with that confrontation to get the most best possible outcome. And when you go into the civilian world, if you realize that, which I'm going to talk about at the end, that ability to handle confrontation is actually gives you kind of a superpower. Obviously, I didn't realize this initially. This is something that happened that I realized later in life. But understanding like being aggressive, being effective, understanding knowing where to stand your ground and when to, when to kind of pull back, that is, that is really a superpower. So the, the improved ability to handle confrontation is, is something you get out of being in the military. The next thing is being enhanced stress management. Uh, 
you know, nothing against uh, anybody on our team, nothing against any, you know, nothing against my wife. We, we talk about this, uh, a lot, but I have a much higher capacity for stress, a much deeper capability to handle much more stress than my wife can. And obviously some of that is she wasn't in the military. There's a biological component, but also in men as well, right? Uh, men who have not been tested, who have not been pushed to their limits, their ability, their level of stress management is here while mine is up here because you're constantly having to deal with some sort of stressors. And then if you go to combat, you're literally having to make decisions uh, in a split second that have life or death consequences. So being stressed out about, for instance, a house closing or a deal on a car or your water being turned off or a bill not getting paid doesn't seem that important when it comes to the grander scheme of life and death. So our ability to handle stress, our ability to manage stress very effectively and a lot large amount of stress is increased. But it is, again, this really just comes from, and this is the reason why the things like the Crucible, the things like the Squire program for young men, the things like the project, the Modern Day Night Project, are so crucial for men or just in, in general any kind of challenges because what's happening is if you've never done anything in your life, right, your ability to handle stress goes up, right? And we see that in these events where we hit a guy, we hit his level and he rings the bell or he quits or he taps out or whatever because he just found his new threshold. The beauty part of that is, and I really do think, and even the guys that ring the bell, I think that is a beautiful thing because they literally just found their limiting factor for stress. Like this is as much I can physically, mentally, spiritually handle. Now they know, and now it's something they can work on. I would imagine, Mario, you getting shot was a new level of stress management. I would say so, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah. like some things don't seem as stressful anymore. You're like, well, I'm not, I didn't get shot or shot at, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, even the project, even after the project, it seemed like things that I might have stressed out about like before that. Fired. Yeah, like getting fired or <laughs> getting let go from a job. Right. I was literally just like, okay, well, I'm just, I'll figure it out. Right. It's not going to be, it's not that big of a deal to but me. But beforehand, as I would have lost my mind. Yeah. I would have been stressed out. I would have been probably. But you were cool, calm, and collective. I'll kicking figure, my dog I'll or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a really big thing is like being able to be cool, calm, and collective under stress, right? The, the, the next thing being, and this could be job, de this could be job dependent, but <coughs> excuse me, guys, um, a heightened situational awareness, just being more situational aware. And this could be more from, you know, my, my time in the military. Um, but I think that the guys in the military, you're just a little bit more tuned in and you kind of notice it. And I, even now, and maybe it's just the way I carry myself, but I could go with John. I could go with one of my friends and I got, you know, even looking the way that I look now, um, tattoos, beard, et cetera, and maybe because I'm in shape, but they go, Were you guys a vet? You guys in the military? I'm like, is that, that fucking obvious? Is it really that obvious that I was, I served in the military? Um, and people say, well, it's just the way you carry yourself. It's just the way that you're, you're paying attention. Um, you just seem kind of switched on. So I think that's another thing that you get because you're constantly, you know, we always say head on a swivel, right? You're constantly paying attention to where you have this heightened, this heightened situa uh, situational awareness, wherever you're at, you walk in, you immediately look for exits, you, you immediately look, assess the room. And many of you that are veterans probably don't even know that you do that, or maybe you do. Um, and it's not, pan you know, paranoia, it's just your training. It's just you're, you've been exposed to environments to where you had to pay attention. Uh, things that, you know, majority of America, we used to make a joke, a joke that the Marines are at war and America's at the mall. And we would come back, <laughs> we would come back and, and really it would just be like, you're just walking like this. You see people on the wall and they're just like heads down and you're just like, what the hell is going on, dude? You know, women with children, the same thing. They're just completely oblivious to their surroundings, and that's the reason why kids can get snatched. You get purses taken out of cars. 
people get kidnapped, people get mugged, ATMs, gas stations, is because they're just have they have zero situational awareness. So that's another thing. It's the third thing that I think that it gives you is this heightened situational awareness or even understanding why you should be situationally aware. Um, and then overall, the fourth thing is just, and definitely not the least, but this enhanced mental toughness. It, this, you know, you have to go through, regardless of what branch of the military you join, you go through a, a, a boot camp or recruit training that kind of washes away the old and just really forces you to do something difficult every single day. And that changes your perception of what is hard. So you just become more mentally tough. And what you think that you are you weren't, and because you don't really can't quit, right? There's no quit in recruit training or boot camp. You're surpassing these mental levels of toughness. So what you think that your physical body is not capable of, your mind typically fades, especially earlier in life. Your mind will, will typically fail before your body. Now, as you get older and you keep pushing the thing, that flips and your your mind's like, I can literally do anything and my this body just fucking shits the bed. We were talking about that with B at the project, this last class 18 project. You're like, I can mentally do all of these things, but damn, these knees <laughs> just don't hold up. But the reality is that's what it is. And, and as you're challenging yourself and as you're going through this military process, you're removing these limiting mental factors that you have and you're like holy shit i can achieve i can get oc sprayed i can get tased i can go through the gas chamber and still fight i can still do all these things even though i've got this massive you know you know physical stress around me my my mentality is just so much stronger that it's like this too shall pass and it's not really even a big of a deal even if my body does does uh fade so you know, is there any actual science behind this? Yeah, it's the it's the neuroplasticity of repeating a process over and over and putting the rips in, right? It's like they talk about muscle memory and, and emotional regulation and all these different things, but it, essentially it comes down to that. It's muscle memory. You put yourself through these challenges in these situations so long for so and so many amount of reps that it just becomes that just that muscle memory it just becomes what's more normal you know your heightened situational awareness if you go into a restaurant and you're always looking for exits you go use the bathroom so you know where the bathroom is you know where the exits are you know and you're scanning the room you do that every time and it's just putting in the reps of it before you know it it's normal to you and everybody else thinks you're you're crazy so <laughs> you're not crazy well maybe a little bit crazy um crazy good so that's those are my four things of of how the military can change. And you know what, dude? If you're if you're a guy, you're like, I really want to do this job. I wanna I want to go be recon. I want to go be a Green Beret, Marsoc SEAL. I want to go do this thing, whatever that thing is to you, right? Um, do it, fucking do it, dude. It's your life. You don't owe anything to anybody. You don't have to. You don't have to like decide to. You know, explain it to your parents. You don't know, explain it to your fucking girlfriend. Like men need to go live out their personal journey. And if you've, if you've learned anything from me in my other videos is every single one of us has a personal journey that we have to walk and no, under no circumstances shall you not walk it because what happens then is you build resentment, you get depressed, you're not living your own, your true self and uh, you leave a lot of opportunity at the table and it's just a sad thing to see men sacrifice their own personal journey. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen your profound ways of rewiring your brain or how the military re rewires your brain. So if you're a veteran, remember these facts. You're not a victim. You signed the motherfucking contract. You signed up. So remember who the fuck you are and the things that you have. And uh, don't be a whiny little bitch. Be a role model for all these other guys coming behind us. Other than that, never quit, never surrender. Always forward. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.